you know that most prospects need additional nurture in order to get to a sales conversation? That means if they download something from your website, like an ebook or a guide or a case study, there's additional touch points needed to get them to have that sales conversation. But if you don't have marketing and sales pro, what do you do? Because there's no way you can actually automate that nurture inside a HubSpot starter. Well, if you use Zapier, you can actually do that using a combination of Zapier, HubSpot, and Gmail. I'm gonna dive in in this video and show you how to have a form submission and then those strip emails that goes out to those prospects when you're doing other things, waiting for them to convert. So the first thing we need to do is determine what we're going to use to trigger that email sequence from Zapier. So in this case, we actually have a case study download that we're setting up with a list of those people that we want to nurture. So in other words, what we have is a form and this form is actually on a page. The next thing we need to do is figure out how we're going to use this inside of the Zapier environment. So in this case, we have someone who's already submitted this. We have this alley test and we're going to see how this prospect actually gets enrolled in the follow-up in Zapier. Okay, so when you move over to Zapier, you may need a paid account for this depending on where you're at and how many zaps you're running. But the first thing you're going to do is figure out what's going to trigger this zap to start. In this case, we're having them join a list. So let's open this up and look at what we need to do to set up this zap. So on the right-hand side, the event is new contact in list. So this means that instantaneously when that contact gets added to this list, so the one that we just looked at over here, when they get added to this list, they're gonna show up in here and they're gonna trigger that campaign. Now my HubSpot's already integrated with Zapier. You'll need to do that when you first set it up. When we go to account, you'll see that. And then the trigger here is going to be, we're going to make sure that they are in, this is actually the wrong list. Let's go to case study and we're gonna find that list. If it doesn't show up, you might have a lot of lists. So we're gonna load more here and we're going to see that this is the list that we want. Okay, so that should be good. These are the properties that it automatically pulls through when a submission happens over to that list. If you want more, you can actually then look at additional properties you might wanna retrieve. In this case, we're good. So we're gonna continue. And then at every step of the way, you wanna test that trigger to make sure it's functioning like you want it to. So we're gonna test this trigger. It's going to go look for a person on that list. Again, they pulled that test submission. We're gonna continue with that record. All right, I'm gonna go back to HubSpot because even if you're on Starter, the first thing that you do get access to, you don't get the whole workflows, but you can do a automatic follow-up on that uh, form submission. So here, if I'm gonna go back a step and go, I'm going to go send a follow-up after a uh, form submission, in your starter version, you get simple workflows. And that means after somebody submits a form in Marketing Starter, you can actually then send one email follow-up. And that's a marketing email. We've got a different video about that, but you can send one. So we don't wanna send it like this might be, hey, you just asked for a case study playbook. Here's your playbook. That's the email that this one should be. So what we're trying to fulfill here in this use case is triggering auto emails to go out after this initial one. Again, more touch points, higher chance of conversion. So let's pretend that this already went out. So when we go back to our Zapier environment, we're gonna delay this for three days because that first email they got was right after they submitted the form. Three days later is when we want them to get this first email that's this nurture email. So we're going to choose a delay as our next step and we're going to delay four. And then in this action, we're going to delay for three. So we've got two fields, three, and then delay for days. We're gonna go ahead and test this. Let's retest this step. It's going to tell us that this functioned properly and let's continue. Fantastic. All right, now the next step we need to is in, uh, in this case, we're using Gmail. So you have your Gmail integrated with HubSpot or in this case, if you don't, it's just Gmail, that's fine. We're going to integrate that with Zapier. So I've done that already. We're gonna select our event is send email, and then we're gonna to move to our next step. So our next step, again, it's already integrated. And in this case, we've got a variety of things pulling from that contact record in HubSpot to power our next steps. So the two is going to be the email that was pulled over from that HubSpot record. And anytime you see this little HubSpotty widget, it means that's pulling from that record that was created initially in step one. Now CC, we don't need to CC anybody, but if you want this to be recorded in HubSpot, as an activity in the record, you do need to add your BCC, which automatically then sends it into HubSpot and matches it with that contact record. Um, I'm adding my address as the person who's from. You can get kind of complicated on this if you want by using tokens inside a HubSpot that might represent the email contact owner that you wanna use. Again, in this case, we're just keeping it simple. I put my name and my email, and then this is where you're going to write the email right inside of Zapier. So on the subject line, I've got, again, what I want to use. My body type, you've got a couple of different body types 
to choose from. In this place, I want to use HTML because I don't want it to come across as a big body of text. So HTML allows me to mark that up so I can actually have line breaks and so on and so forth. And we're going to keep that as if uh, we already selected it. And then as you'll notice here, if you don't know how to use HTML markup, ChatGPT is a great use case for this. Throw it in there, get the markup. But we just want to make sure there's line breaks and then make sure that our um, uh, a link that we're asking people to click on is added in here as well. So that's how to do the body of the email. The signature is actually going to pull from what you have set up over on Gmail. And then the rest of this should be good to go. So we can actually test this step. So if I retest this, I can actually then see that an email was just sent from Gmail to this account a second ago. So if I pull up where it was sent, fantastic. You'll see that it actually appeared here in my inbox and this is what that looks like. So again, we've already got that email out. It's sent from Zapier, looks very nice and clean, just like a one-to-one -one email would, but that's how we automated that without having sales bro. See, isn't this awesome? Now we're gonna continue. So the rest of this is, again, we're gonna do this same thing repeatedly, depending on how many emails you want to send. So in this case, if I actually uh, exit out of here, you'll see that I've got this set up so that we've got a delay for three, send an email, delay for three, send email number two, delay for three. So again, you can decide how you want this to work. The thing you might wanna keep in mind is, do you want them to ever get pulled out of this sort of chain of events? If you do, you may need to add a step in here that's like, hey, go look and see if they're on this list or if this property has changed. In that case, like if their lifecycle stage property has changed to opportunity or customer, you're gonna have to add those triggers in here to make sure you don't end up, again, looking tone deaf. But chances are, if you just send three follow-up emails, those are probably gonna be pretty safe. Keep it simple. The last thing you can do is if you wanted to add an engagement opportunity on the record in HubSpot, you could do that too. So in this case, I've added create engagement. And when you create engagement, you've got a couple of options here. Actually, these are all options in HubSpot, so excuse me. We're gonna to go to the account and the action. When I go to create engagement, I wanna create a task, have it assigned to me, and this task is then go and connect with this person on LinkedIn. So again, kind of like you're seeing that drip information happen over in Sales Pro, if you happen to have that tool, if you don't and you're using Starter, this again is a workaround and a hack that puts the power of Zapier to use. I can go ahead and click through this, connect on LinkedIn. I can use that property that came through on their contact record to power the task itself. Let's go ahead and retest this step and see how this shows up over in HubSpot. I'm gonna pull up this record and we're going to refresh. And you'll see that we actually, from that action that I just tested, we now have a task that was automatically created here on that record inside of HubSpot. And as you can see, those emails that I just sent through actually get logged into their record as well. Since we don't have the tracking code in there that shows up as, as not, um, not tracked, there's another workaround around that, but we're keeping it simple, stupid for this particular opportunity. Again, getting in front of those people uh, to make sure that that happens. So that's about it. When you hit publish, we're going to add, um, I've already published this once, so we're gonna call this version two, and we're gonna publish this. And in this case, it's gonna go live. And anybody that would submit that form over on the website, so if they submitted this lead gen form, they would get entered into this list and then they would get triggered into this email sequence here. And then ultimately it would show up on their contact record and it would show up like this in their inbox. So that is how to trigger email campaigns in HubSpot using Zapier and your Gmail if you don't quite have the pro tools available to get more use out of Starter. For more tips, tricks, and how to's, hit that subscribe button. And if you want some email templates that maybe will help you out a little bit more, head over to our other video about seven email templates every HubSpot user needs to have. Those might be good to put to use in your Zapier sequence. Bye for now.